Walking simulator has become something of a dirty word. It suggests that the genre offers a scenic route only through a location, a story, or a cast of characters, which in turn sullies a medium, still fighting for legitimacy in one way or another, built on interactivity and play. Whether you consider this to be true or not, something to argue or not, Giant Sparrow's What Remains of Edith Finch currently stands as one of the most notable entries in this divisive genre. You could say the game offers a one-of-a-kind scenic route that, unlike some others of the same category and much like Nier Automata or Lucas Pope's Papers, Please, would be hard to imagine outside of this medium specifically, let alone working. In summary, the game is a first-person narrative adventure, the purpose of which is to uncover the true nature of a supposed curse placed upon a most unfortunate family indeed. For all intents and purposes, what remains of Edith Finch is an anthology of short stories that all connect together via the titular Finch family tree. The game chronicles the lives and deaths of the family across eras and lifetimes, but rather uniquely does so in different ways, both visual and narrative, and from different perspectives. That is to say, each fallen member is introduced to us in ways that reflect the people themselves. A diary, a letter, a series of photographs, a comic. The Finch family is not only given breath, but illuminated. Subsequently, the Finches feel familiar. In a way, they represent every family you know and ever will know. Trials and tribulations, laughter, secrets, tragedies, imagination, the ingredients in what remains of Edith Finch shape something life-affirming, transformative, and I don't use these terms lightly. Much of this is achieved beautifully through the design and layout of the house, the contrasting visual styles and modes of storytelling in each vignette. Even so, I personally like to think the central reason is a little more reflective. Sincerity and or experience is, in my opinion, difficult to imitate, and when these things act as the basis for any form of art, whatever the genre or medium, you will walk away from it in a different way. An experience such as this can be a powerful thing. It might cause you to reevaluate your life or how you feel about living, could give you a safe place to fall or echo your thoughts, challenge formerly held principles. The world is, thankfully, full of experiences such as these. What remains of Edith Finch, however, not only explores a universally human experience that can be deeply moving, but does so in a medium seldom reserved for such poetry and introspection. I mentioned that video games still face opposition as a fledgling medium, at least compared to some others, and it is in my view that if any game could stand as a part of this movement, meaning to show what video games can be and do, Edith Finch is most certainly one of them, because, at its roots, the game talks about that collection of people who've lived and passed, some of whom you will never meet or know from which you came. It touches upon each person as briefly as they entered this life before leaving it, and asserts that you too must consider yourself one of these branches of the tree from which others will eventually grow. One day, you too will transform into a memory, an old room or a handful of old relics that with any luck will pass down and change hands, carrying with it new meaning and history. All this communicated with poignancy, good humour and a frankness in the face of the transitory nature of it all. If you are familiar with this game, you might recall the Finch House, a building stacked high with rooms upon rooms. It is the literal representation of the story of a family, the Finches, as well as any other family out there in the world, including your own. A refined, timeless piece, not just within the realm of quote-unquote walking simulators. This video is perhaps one of the shortest I've made, for good reason. On the one hand, there really isn't too much to explain. The game is two to three hours long, give or take, falls into the walking simulator or adventure genre, if you prefer, with a reasonable platinum trophy that doesn't require too much effort. Above all, the game is only really effective if you know next to nothing of the Finches themselves. So it's with some sadness that I've had to boil this overview down to what I feel makes the game notable instead. 
Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Feel free to share your thoughts and comments about what remains of Edith Finch here, on my Facebook page or on Twitter, the links to which are down below. I try to read and respond to as many comments as I can. I will see you soon in my next video. Thank you again.